All right. Welcome back. Well, we're turning attention to that uh, conversation about metering Nigerians. And so, yes, there was a directive from the federal government to meter millions of Nigerians and stop estimated billing. So where are we on that? Uh, two gentlemen joining us this morning to speak about that. Mr. Yahya Yahya is a legal practitioner and an energy consultant. Uh, we also do have uh, engineer Kola Balogo, who himself is the MD of MoMAS, that's a meter manufacturing company. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Yeah, good morning. All right, Mr. Balogo, let, let me start with you uh, about this matter. It's been talked about who knows for how long now, and it will continue to be. So from, from your assessment, that directive to, uh, what, 4 million rollout for this next phase, how... What kind of progress, or how, or where are we exactly uh, in the scheme of things? If you give us your impression of that. Thank you very much, Chamberlain. Uh, uh, for the first time in the history of uh, intervention, Nigeria, uh, Nigerian government has really done so much in this uh, atmosphere of uh, military intervention. You recall that uh, during the past administration, one million meter was promised that uh, consumer will have one, one million meter free, but it, it didn't see the light of the day at the end of the day. But this intervention has come to be. The last stakeholder meeting we had, 750 meters has been rolled out from the one million meter promise to the consumer. And that is the reason why we should, we should applaud this government for this little intervention. We still have a lot of metering gap. We still have more than 6 million metering gap. But there's a second phase coming up now, which is phase one. The earlier phase was called phase zero, which is the in-country in meters need to, be, uh, need, to, need to be installed to the consumers, which has been registered to various disco. And that's what's been done up to 75%. But there's another scheme coming up under the same intervention that the manufacturer will be encouraged to produce and distribute to the disco. And that's where we are now. We are in the evaluation uh, stages, and very soon the rollout plan will come out and we'll be able to now roll out for the second phase. Is it a challenge of infrastructure or a challenge of um, a wide uh, gap to be met? Yes, it's the, it's the gap that we have on the, in the country. The, the metering gap is huge, and the, the, the structure of the, I mean, the infrastructure is another setback because there are no linear process of installing meters. When you start, you install one house here, the next house can be another miles away, and that's create a lot of logistics. Also, we are using this opportunity to build up uh, woman capability that is uh, uh, training young ones to be able to key into the scheme so that we can have a lot of youth to know how to do military installation. Well, as I'm talking to you, so there's some training that is even going on to empower the youth so that they will be able to know how to do meter installation in all the in all the discos across the country. So infrastructure is a setback because there are no logistics arrangements for us to move data to every household. Also, financing is a major setback, and that's why the CBA is intervening. So, but it has to be in, on a continuous basis so that there won't be a stop gap. Because as soon as we create a stop gap, the global logistics uh, uh, procurement of components will set in. And we'll be, we'll, once there's a lead time between the, the financier and the supplier of components, then there will be a lot of gap. And those are things we are trying to make sure that it doesn't happen again. As we okay. as we intervene in the first in the zero, phase zero and we have clocked up to 75% performance, let the intervention continue so that it, there won't be any stop that, so that the phase zero will kick in and will continue rolling out the meter. All right, Mr. Mr. Yeah. How does this rollout come across to you? Um, thank you very much, Chamberlain. Um, Without an iota of doubt, um, the mass metering rollout is a is a is a germane idea and a good initiative by the federal government of Nigeria. And 
the policy framework such that um, only local meat manufacturers can participate in this scheme is very laudable. However, this um, policy is an isolated solution to an enterprise problem. What do I mean by that? Yes, um, we have meat manufacturers who have not been able to meet their capacity, and it is essential that um, government um, um, supports them so that they can be able to manufacture at full capacity. However, there is an end-to-end -end, um, process in the entire supply chain for metering in the Nigerian supply industry. And what am I talking about? Is that um, the, the meter manufacturers, for one, um, many of them are assemblers and um, a, a very few ones like um, um, engineer but um, Kolabalo, whose men call our original equipment manufacturers. However, in any case, they still need access to forex to be able to procure the requisite um, 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 uh, materials and, and, and components and the assembly parts to produce this. Has that been adequately addressed? Um, I think the answer is no. Also is that um, if you want to deploy this type of mass metering plan and we want to deploy one million meters within a certain um, definitive um, um, time frame, what do have we put in place? Do we have the adequate manpower for um, the, the meter service providers that are going to be able to meter um, the nation at this scale and speed? Um, do we have the accompanying logistics to be able to support the moving of manpower and goods and all the metering infrastructure across the nation? Most importantly, have we engaged critical stakeholders like the Nigerian Electricity Service Agency, which is the umbrella body for standards and enforcement of, 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 of of quality in the Nigerian electricity supply industry. They are also the custodians of the military testing station. Have we increased their capacity such that they are able to receive without any hitches um, the, the, the volume of, 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 of meters that is being rolled out by the national um, um, uh, metering plan? I think my, your guess is as good as mine on, um, on where we are today and how well the policies are, 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 is doing if we only address isolated incidences about the issues that we have at hand. Hmm. Well, Engineer Kolabalogo, uh, you, may, you may want to talk us through the process uh, because there are those who believe that maybe there are some infrastructure, no, institutional gaps that need to be blocked. There are those as, who allege that there's a lot of racketeering going on, slowing down the process. Um, what role do the uh, meter manufacturing companies like yours have? What role do the discos have? Who are the people that interface with the customers directly? Talk us through the process and what are the bottlenecks that you have seen? Thank you. Now, the, the interface between consumer and the disco is called substation, like a transformer. And is the owner of that transformer is the, is the disco. And that's the trading point between the uh, customer and the disco. Every transformer has quite a number of uh, consumers attached to it. And those consumers need to be metered in order to have energy accountability, because it is from that transformer, the disco pay the market operator what he has collected from that transformer. However, the statistic, the database at times is not aligned. You, at times you have insufficient information on the database as to those who are collect, I mean, connected to the transformer. And those are the reason why the disco conductor an audit to ensure that they improve on their customer database so that they can have the right, the right data of the number of consumers they have. Now, the net as a regulator has come out with another to add into the meter rollout scheme, map. The map has been resurfaced so that any consumer who cannot wait for federal government rollout scheme can as well pay for meter, but the, the modality is still ongoing. I'm sure if, if in the next one month, the modality will be halved. For consumers who cannot wait for federal government free meter intervention, can as well pay for meter and get meter as quickly as possible. But isn't that a role? Isn't that a problem on its own, Engineer Balogun? Because um, if that gap is there for those who cannot wait, 
they have automatically opened the, uh, a doorway for racketeering, you know, with uh, those who have access to the meters. If you can't wait, uh, we're going to come to you in three months' time, but if you can't wait, you can pay for it, even though they do have the meters installed already. Right. Those are the issues that the regulator needs to come up with, with a way to ensure that we remove racketeering, because it's always there as a Nigerian factor. If once we create artificial scarcity, consumer will be desperate and will be able to pay extra mile for whoever that is approaching them. These are things that we need to educate the consumer. So there's a lot of advocacy from the net to educate the consumer that don't trade, don't deal with a middleman. Go straight to your disco, pay or register your house or register your, your interest in metering so that the disco will come and assess your house for metering ready and be able to put meter. Because oftentimes, there are some premises you actually go, you go and audit or you go and do inspection, military inspection, and you discover that the, the cross creeks of the cables that are there, you cannot install meter. You will be a, you, there will be a lot of technical losses. So they need to rewire the entire house or the entire, because there are a lot of current leakages where you see a lot of cable, I mean, creek cross in the, the premises of the consumer. You can't put meter in such a premises. So the uh, technician needs to go there, rewire the place, and before you put, uh, you now install meter so that you can read, uh, you can read efficiently. Who because bears the cost of that rewiring? It's the owner of the house. Because originally, before a service is provided to any consumer, they're supposed to be an energy auditing. They're supposed to go there and satisfy the house that electrical Electrically, it has been standardized, and that is the job of NEMSA. NEMSA is supposed to go there for inspection, confirm that the wiring in this house is so is in, that, is in line with the standard, is in line with IEC, is in line with Nigerian standard. Then you will now inform the disco that you can, this consumer is ready for meeting. So please provide services into that premises for, and before you even install the wire, the meter will be there for. That is supposed to be the standard. But because there have been a lot of gaps, there have been breach of processes, some people have been in, uh, connected to the system, I mean, to the network without metering. Those are the gaps we are bridging now. And that's the intervention federal government is doing in to ensure that all those who have been connected without metering are now metered. But the scarcities are there. The funding process is still limited to because one, meter, one million meter will cost us Averagely 40 billion. So it's a huge capital investment. So, and that's the reason why it takes a gradual process. And however, even if the money is available, the logistics of procuring the raw materials, custom issues are there, clearing process are there. The global uh, pandemic of factories shutting down from getting raw materials are also there globally. And that's why we're saying that we have to keep doing a uh, uh, gradual uh, backward integration so that some of these raw materials can be procured locally. And that's part of the, the system we are running right. now to ensure that some of these components are gotten locally. By the time uh, Dagote refinery comes on street, we'll be buying some of the chemical raw material from the Dagote, and that will ease the importation, and that will reduce our forex dependence on the well, raw material the, the as well. This is just some feedback. I mean, even when the energy audit is done and the uh, owners of premises fund the wiring or rewiring of the entire house, some of those technicians really do a very poor job. I mean, it's even, it looks terrible compared to what they even met on the ground. So this is something that we, we see time and again in those places, hoping that they improve upon it. But when you speak about MAP, the argument that they put forward about MAP, they thought it wasn't working, and so they had to come up with this new system. And now that they're going back to MAP, there are several people who were in that scheme, they paid for those meters until they, they never got it, even after they scrapped MAP, and now you talk about them going to MAP. So what's the consideration for them to even consider going back to that scheme? Yes, that was a stakeholder consultation by the regulator, call all the stakeholder that what are the suggested way of improving the metering gap? So 
with all submission, we all agree that if the federal government intervention of the process of getting funding, approval for funding, approval for forest, if any consumer could not wait, let them give them the liberty of freedom to pay and get meters so that some of us who have meter on the, the factory will be able to sell for that and some who have been purchased meters with, that have it in their world will be able to exercise that sales into, extend that sales into consumer uh, uh, need. But the federal government insisted that they will keep funding it, but this, the process is still slow. The phase one is coming up. That's why the entire stakeholders give that suggestion that MAP should come back so that that will be another Another option for since, consumers. Since, since, map was working. Well, since you are a stakeholder, part of the conversations, is it also in consideration that those who paid previously will be able to renew their requests since they already have their receipts of payment in the previous map? Obviously, it is, it is their rights and they must be limited. Once you have paid and you have a proof of payment, I think it's between the consumer and the disco. And if the disco refuses, NEC is there to intervene, obviously. Okay. So they take their complaint to NEC and they will be able to rescue them. But I'm very, very sure disco will be able to meet at them when they have the right. Also, at times, what normally led to this kind of delay in deploying meter to consumer premises, if they have a backlog of debts that's have been outstanding. At times, that brings in a lot of argument that you, you need to sort out or you need to have a way to pay off your debt or you give us a schedule which will be, will be deducting the, the arrears from you so that we'll be able to meet our debt. Those are the things that normally slow down the process of installation or agreeing to a consumer who have paid for meter that has not been installed. Mm. Well, Mr. Ayaya, it, it, it seems that the, the problem for the consumer is um, perhaps just beginning. Um, first of all, I mean, you've listened to uh, Engineer Balogo and you've also heard about all kinds of racketeering, collusion of um, officials of the distribution companies, uh, creating what Engineer Balogun called uh, um, artificial scarcity. How do we begin to address these issues? Oh, thank you very much. Um, you know, one of the biggest um, challenges um, currently being suffered in the electricity sector is this issue of sabotage. But, you know, we have to commend um, the federal government with, for their responsive uh, plan and uh, solutions to all of these problems. Like, for one, um, we can't quite address some of these issues if we don't really go to the historical and extent of how we got here. We all know what happened in Capmai, then we had MAP, and then we had um, many of the private sector participants that came to invest in MAP, eventually came, came up and said that um, they did not, they could not assess um, the financing required to be able to fulfill their obligations. It was a very huge um, challenge. And um, MAP um, did, did okay, but it wasn't as successful as we all projected. Now, this presidential response, which is the mass metering rolling plan, what he does is that the government is just trying to intervene, yes, in, in delivering these meters to the end users. Now, there is no exclusive list of how a customer can access meters. There are basically four options. And the reason why it's made as flexible as possible is just so that you do not frustrate a customer to only one choice or one only one process by which they can be metered. And then you continue to expose them to the vulnerability of estimated billing. And what are these options? The, the mass metering rollout plan is still subsisting and is still ongoing. We lead on its own be able to close the metering gap, I think time will tell. Second of all is that the discos on their own have not been precluded from purchasing meters and metering their customers at their own cost. That is number two. Number three is that the mass metering um, um, program has not in any way alienated the meter asset provider um, 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 regulation of 2018. Rather, it was amended 
and collapsed um, so that it can work together with the mass metering program. So what you see is that there are always efforts just to make sure that the average consumer like you and I have a meter over your, or your wall and you can measure the electricity that you're using. However, just like every process, the human factor and, um, and, and, and self-interest, unfortunately, is a major challenge, especially for us in Nigeria. There are many good policies that have come, you know, but when the rubber meets the road, how will it pan out? How will it work? Um, how will the people accept it? And how much impact will it have on the, um, on the Nigerian electricity supply industry at that? Just like I, I said earlier, I think that the, the mass metering program is a good initiative, but it is an isolated solution to a complex problem. It is essential that the end-to-end -end process from the manufacturing of the meter, even from the parts of the manufacturers, just um, uh, as, as the manufacturers have said, from the procurement of the forex down to the manufacturing process to actually ensure that the manufacturers actually have the capacity that they claim down to the people that will install these meters, down to the staffs of the utility companies that want to take advantage of this process for their own selfish goods. Um, and of course, when these meters are eventually manufactured, they are to be tested before they are being deployed to the final consumer. All of these ends, there has to be steady and sustainable investment. They have to be tested. They have to All right, be Mr. Yaya. All right, we, we, we need to anchor at this point, uh, actually, but we do appreciate both of you for talking to us this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a legal practitioner, and uh, we also have had uh, uh, Mr. Kola Balogu, who is an engineer, as well as the MD CEO of MoMA's Electricity Meters Manufacturing Company Limited. Gentlemen, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you very much, Chamberlain and Let's take a look at some messages coming through from uh, viewers from what they've seen. The digital currency did get some uh, reaction. Uh, this one coming from Nicholas. Uh, CBN should focus on stabilization of the Naira against Forex instead of coming up with the issue of e Naira. What is the use of e Naira to a currency that has performed poorly under the watch of this administration? Naira is not attractive anymore as a currency. And as such, coming up with this, it's not the right time for such. Ola Kunju says about the same issue, Nigeria banned crypto transactions within the banking sector in February 2021. And eight months later, introduced the e Naira. Whilst it took three years and NSAS protests for, the, for police reforms to be implemented. This very fact shows government can make swift policies when it affects their finances and power. Good policies protect not only the economy and systems, but also citizens and the nation as a whole. Well, Joseph weighs in as, uh, as well on the same matter. He says, this is a good initiative for Nigeria and Nigerians. We in this country have a peculiar way of doing things. What has the CBN done to check criminality about the e Naira? How can I protect my money knowing that armed robbers can come up to me a mandate me to transfer the e Naira to their own account. This is the kind of foresight the CBN should have beforehand. Well, Paul is talking about the same thing. He says, how I wish our central bank can concentrate on rolling out workable policies that can save our economy from crashing further. Central bank is known to be the banker's bank and not custodians or managers of individual funds. They should monitor the lower banks and protect the depositors instead of competing with the lower banks. I will not be surprised if charges are introduced very soon on e naira transactions, which I believe is the CBN's goal for the intervention. Well, let's just hope the CBN can come out and say, okay, this is the education we have for you. Watch the space. Uh, Adeni says about the Oyo jailbreak. If bandits could invade a well-secured and well-fortified Nigeria Defense Academy, how much more of the correctional facility? The only major noticeable security measure you have in many of these facilities are basically guns. You need more than that to, such, to man such facilities. And for God's sake, our correctional facilities are overwhelmed. We should either build more or decongest them. 
On the same issue, Ali Gwanlaji says it is so sad that for the event that happened in Oyo State, it is so sad the event that happened in Oyo State. But also, it is inappropriate for the Interior Minister to announce publicly on the television that thumbprints and their biometrics will be given to the appropriate authorities for the inmates to be apprehended. He would have taken that step instead of the announcement. Now the escaped prisoners will be on the lookout for this. <laughs> oh boy. So, it's just a <laughs> that they've got to discuss. But, well, that is it today. Uh, thank you all for watching, as always. Uh, we appreciate your messages as well. I'm Chamberlain. So. And I'm Ayo Makinde. Do have a wonderful day.